examples. All right, so thanks everybody. Welcome to breakout group two. Um, so I'm Nicole McDermott. I'm part of the project team and I'll be your facilitator um, in, this, in this group today. And so I just, I think most everybody knows each other, of course, EMAC members, but just in case, just a real quick um, intro around the room. Um, and so again, I'm part of the project team. I've been involved in these EMAC meetings for a while, just kind of more in the background. So if I haven't met you, nice, nice to meet you. So um, we'll just go through my screen here. So Michael, go ahead. Hi everyone, Michael Espinoza. I use he, him pronouns. I'm with the Portland Bureau of Transportation. Thanks, Michael. Spiro. Hi, my name is Spiro. I use he, him pronouns. I'm on the WSP side. I support Nicole with the EMAC effort and I'm also involved in the TOL project with the community outreach section. Thanks, Spiro. Bill? Hi, I'm Bill Bauman. I'm from Community Motion in Vancouver. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Jermaine? Hello, everyone. My name is Jermaine Flinter. I'm with Player Grow Learn. And him, I'm glad to be here. I'm going to go off camera because when I get on camera, I lose internet connection. But I just want to say hello to everybody and bounce back out. Yeah. Good to see your face for a moment, Jermaine. Thanks. Um, Sharon? Hi, everyone. Uh, Sharon Smith. I'm on the OTC, and I'm your, I guess, your liaison for this committee. Thanks, Sharon. Park? I'm Park Woodworth, and I'm representing Ride Connection here on the committee. Right. And last but not least, Hanna. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hanna Williams. I work for ODOT on the tool program in the Urban Mobility Office, and I do engagement. Good to see everyone. All right, so um, I'll bring up the Jamboard um, now, and then Spiro will start to populate that as I as I share my screen. Um, so the first the first topic we want to discuss in the breakout rooms is the research um, document. And if we need to bring that up on the screen, just let me know. I can always stop sharing the Jamboard, and we can bring up the research document if you want to talk about any specific uh, key takeaway. Too, but um, let's see. So everybody, um, everybody seeing the Jamboard now? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, we'll just start with, you know, what what were your reactions to the research document? Kind of to those key takeaways. Anything you want additional clarity on? Um, questions about? Um, in anything like that. I'm happy to start. Yeah. So thank, thanks for this immense amount of research. I know there's a lot of work that to this and um, it was really interesting to read. One thing that really struck out to me was in point number six around tolling to support greater transit uh, will help down in the section around professors, uh, Michael Manville and Emily Goldman, there's a particular part where it says, uh, bus riders are poorer than the population overall, but rail riders are richer and transit agencies spend disproportionately on rail. And I thought that was like a really uh, just interesting thing to, to reflect on. And um, like, you know, one thing that I, I hear um, in my community is, you know, the importance of investing in, in transit. And so it, it was interesting to kind of think through that specific thread around like, you know, how does the, uh, the local transit agency, you know, allocate funds and investments like that. Um, but, you know, overall, I think, you know, the, the feeling I got from when I read that was like a caution towards, uh, you know, supporting transit, you know, because of how it's spent. Um, but you know, I still feel strongly that there's a like a net positive when we support transit, and and um, you know, I think there are a lot of details that that need to be thought of very carefully. But overall, I was just thinking that like my you know key feeling is still that you know transit investment is is important. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I think to maybe synthesize that kind of just a little bit 
and Spira, I mean, I think that last point you made, Michael, uh, transit investment is important. And then, um, you know, I think some just being clear in the research document about, you know, how we draw some of those conclusions about the um, the differences in spending um, to versus, you know, rail versus bus. So for sure. And, you know, for example, like when I think about, you know, TriMet, um, uh, you know, TriMet has a lot of um, processes and an equity lens to think through, you know, their service and investments too. So I think, uh, you know, part of uh, investing in transit is also, um, you know, I th think uh, su supporting the work that local transit agencies um, are doing. And so like, if they if they see you know benefits in investing in the bus system or rail system like i think you know i am uh leaning towards like you know i think it's good to respect the process of those like local jurisdictions and their processes to think through like where is the trans investment going to make most sense for for them yeah yeah definitely so yeah rely on local knowledge for for transit investments and um okay yeah, those are great points. Thank you, Michael. Bill, I see you've got your hand up. Thank you. I just wanted to add on to that as I very much agree that we should prioritize uh, transit investments, but it should be noted that they don't work for all people. So if you have folks who are living in a very rural area who commute a long ways into Portland, um, using transit is not gonna be applicable for them to commute in. Um, just due to time and connections they'd have to make they'd almost be spending as much time on the journey as they would be in town at whatever destination they're at. Yeah, and thank you. Oh, good. No, go to, ahead. Oh, just to clarify, we are looking at um, tolling and affordability EMAT policy and strategy options. That's the correct document, right? So right now we were kind of talking, and that was I was just going to make that point about your first comment that is kind of related more to the policy and strategy document, I think. So right okay. now, I was asking about the research document, the key takeaways in the research document. Um, I only have seven documents open. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm happy to share it. Um, oh, I have it somewhere. Um, it's just finding which one, that's that's where I'm struggling. So um, the cover of it says oh, affordability it. research, yep. And so there are the Thank key you. takeaways, the same ones that Garrett ran through um, you know, previously in the meeting are, are the ones we're discussing. So wanting to, to see if if those key takeaways you know really resonate with you if there's anything you want kind of explored further relative to those um but your your point we still can note here and and like i said i do um that can lead us into a policy the policy and strategy options document as well so. and i think Thank something you. that was oh, sorry. something that was missing um from these documents um, was other transportation uh, alternatives to transit, which which would meet some of those needs of people that, that a bus train doesn't work for. And I'm thinking of carpooling and van pooling. And uh, I think that's that's been an important part of many programs, but in particular, the, uh, the Washington State one, it wasn't mentioned and I know um, a big part of when uh, bridge bridges were uh, uh, told up there was reinforcing uh, carpooling and, and van pooling as an alternative for people. Are you talking about in King County? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a that's a good point. The research document doesn't doesn't really get into those alternatives. Um, so yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Anybody else? Go the ahead, program he's referring to is Rideshare Online. Rideshare Online. Okay. Which, if you just Google it, it says it serves both Washington and Oregon. So that could be a good fit for our project. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add um, also on to what Parker was saying, shuttle services are another good option where it acts as transit, but on a smaller scale. Um, but right below the key takeaways when we were getting in when Garrett was getting into the examples I really liked what Los Angeles was providing in terms of their low income assistance plan um, the credit that can be applied towards the transponder deposit or having it prepaid um, where the maintenance fee is waived and then also the transit reward program where frequent transit riders and fast track account holders earn credit for a certain number of trips 
I thought those were very equitable options for a tolling system. Okay. Um, that sort of meets the needs of all folks. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Anybody else on the on the research document? If not, um, it's about that time. We should probably move on to the policy and strategies too, so we have time to discuss all of those. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, perfect. Um, so again, should I um, should I bring up the policy and strategy document? Would that help people rather than seeing the jam board? Or you've got it in front of you. Okay. Okay. Um, then, you know, we really just want to dive right in. I mean, Chris, Chris went through those policy and strategy options, um, and we want to know what you think about them. You know, what do you think is is missing? Is maybe off the mark a bit? Um, you know, what? Um, yeah, how how they should be different. Or if they're perfect, that's great too. <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. I'm not sure if it's a, a thought or just maybe a question or just a rambling thought perhaps. Um, so under the policy options, um, a toll project analysis and development of an equitable toll program, when it says when establishing the definition for low income, include a range that encompasses more than the federal defini definition for poverty, which I agree with because the federal definition is very low. But do, do we have any kind of guideposts or is there, is there any sort of you know, thresholds for us to be thinking about what's the right, is it 200%, is it 250? I, I just don't have a, a good context for that. Um, so that's one question or pondering. And the other one is, do we have any sense of the, uh, the amount of toll that we're going to be charging? Because it seems like we, it'd be nice to know what kind of ranges we're talking about um, when we think about the trade-offs between charging versus investing in transit. It seems like it depends upon how much we're charging. You know, other people think about that. Yeah, thank you. That's that's great. And so I think um, there is some local guidance um, around the two hundred percent. I think um, some other local agencies use use that, and that's um, I, I believe that's what's being used in the the NEPA documentation right now. But that's a good question. Um, you know. And, certainly something to discuss if that's the if that's the right amount. Um, so and then to the toll uh, rate question too, I, I think we're going to get into some of those discussions at some later meeting. So the, the team is working on um, giving some some ranges and, and, and that financial information so that you can um, discuss that. And uh, we understand you need you need that information to to really finalize your recommendations. So um, but yeah, I see uh, Michael and and Bill's hand, so we'll just we'll go in in that order. Actually, I think Bill, you had your hand up first. You want to go? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you have anything to add to Sharon's thought, I would say go for it because I'm going to take this a little bit different direction. Different. Okay. I would just say I I believe that the um that the 200 percent uh measure is what's used in the low income hop card program. Uh, that, that TriMet has. Um, and so later on in my notes, there's a part where I, I think it is nice to see um, parallels with existing programming. And we, when we think about like just making things easy for folks to access, like if they have a low income hop card, that could be, you know, their, their ticket to, you know, this, this program or the exemption and that kind of thing. Um, but so that was just kind of like one thought. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Bill, why don't you go? And then I think. Well, I was going to tie it to the hop card too. So Michael and I are thinking the exact same thing. Um, so with the hop card, I know that it works for the streetcar system, it works for TriMet, and it works for CTRAN. So tying the tolling system to that could be a potential avenue of creating equitable options for Washington residents that might not uh, run afoul of the Oregon Constitution requirements. 
So that might be something to look at. I don't, I don't know, but it's worth researching. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so I, I'm going to uh, shift to a different point, but still in this section of toll project analysis and development of an equitable toll program. In bullet number two, um, it's talking about the trade offs between exemptions, credits, and discounts, um, you know, versus, you know, investing toll revenues into equity and mobility strategies. And I just the, I, the way that that paragraph reads to me is sort of posing it as a either or like we can go one way or the other but I uh, you know what I what I heard from the pricing options for equitable mobility task force um, here in Portland was that like both are important and so it's really about finding I think that that balance between the two and and you know moving both of those things forward um, and uh, specifically on the you know exemptions and credits and and discounts you know, one thing that I heard was really that when you're making a system and there's all these steps to do, you, you just lose people along the way. And so if we have this complicated process of, you know, signing up to get credits or discounts, um, you know, I, I think, of course, we want to sh like streamline that as best as possible. But I think there's real opportunity in the exemptions portion. Like, can we exempt people from having to pay this and sort of, you know, get rid of having having to have folks like put in money that then they get back later and just like adding steps to that process if folks can be exempted. That's something that I heard would be, you know, I think that could really advance equity and make things easier for folks. Um, so I'll, I'll pause there or stop there. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. So exemptions over, over, yeah, reimbursements that require some of that upfront investment and also, um, you know, legwork to actually um, go through that process. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, Park, I think you, you're on mute, Park, if you're talking. Yes, and that, thank you. Of course. In the strategy options, I, I think uh, carpooling and van pooling should be mentioned as, as well as transit is mentioned okay. there. Okay. <clears throat> also in the strategy options, I agree with the set and no or low minimum balance requirement for loading or maintaining transponders. Um, it just doesn't seem right to be forced to maintain a transponder that you probably don't want in the first place. Um, so yeah. I agree with that language or that to be expanded upon a little bit. Okay. So I'll share another uh, comment under toll rate setting and future oversight that um, bottom bullet, uh, ensure that people experiencing low income who struggle to meet basic needs will have a path forward to travel toll free. To, to me, it's that it, the, the phrasing of that just feels a little complicated. I, I think what it's trying to say is like give low income exemptions um, and that's um, that's something like I would support. Like I think if we can be clearer in that uh, statement, that would be useful. So simplify. Was that so, sorry? You said was that the policy or strategy option? Um, uh, that's in the policy options under the toll rate setting and future oversight. That last bullet. Okay, great. So just simplifying the language. Okay. Thanks. And so we've got, I think about four, four more minutes or so before we'll probably um, get the notice that, that we're going to, to end here. Um, uh, Jermaine, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but if you, um, we, haven't, we haven't heard from you, so please feel free to, to chime in if you had any, anything you wanted to add. Um, well, I'll, 
Um, while people are thinking, Nicole, I think I missed something that, that Park had said earlier while I was revising a note. Park, uh, I, I wanted to capture your thought. Did you mention uh, carpooling? I, I didn't, I heard it, but I didn't capture it, I'm sorry. Yes, as, as part of the strategy options, uh, carpooling and van pooling should be mentioned as well as transit. Because they're, they're kind of, uh, they help different groups. Got it. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, Michael, go ahead. Thank you. Um, under the geography, you know, based tolls, um, you know, it talks about uh, uh, providing a credit system or discounted rate to low income drivers who are residents of the I-205 area between now and then when the regional mobility pricing project is implemented. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that makes sense, but I think one finer point to it would be like, it would be uh, important for like the exemptions to like continue into the regional mobility pricing project um, or, you know, evolve into what, what the exemption, um, you know, would look like under, under that system too. I guess I'm just concerned about making sure there's not like just that period and then it ends and then folks have to, uh, you know, go into a new system and, and potentially be really burdened um, uh, by that. And I'm so sorry, we're running out of time. Uh, okay. the thing that I think would be great to include in some portion, uh, maybe under the design of the tool system is um, some thoughts around uh, enforcement and equitable enforcement and managing for um, adverse outcomes that could come from that. And then finally, in that bottom bullet, all the way at the bottom, uh, where it says be specific about transit investments, I think that whole paragraph um, is missing an element about um, transit investments also help enhance alternatives to driving. And so that can, provides folks another option. Um, and one thing we could say is pricing without low income exemptions could increase costs for poor drivers. Well, John, that was an abrupt transfer. <laughs> <laughs> never, never enough time with these, uh, with these breakout groups, huh? Right. Caught midstream. Five more minutes. Put us back. Five more minutes. <laughs> Actually, I think there was another minute left, but uh, <laughs> good to see you all back. 